Is everyone on this island taking sleeping pills? Where's that board? What link did he find between Charles Hawkins and an old amulet? Drake left instructions on how to find the combination of his safe. If somebody finds this, these mem memoirs, there will be no doubt that I am in serious trouble. My last only hope is that my body and bones are still in the place, plane of reality in order that they be recovered and buried. Burned. The funeral urn must be given to my dear mother if she is still of this world. The following message is of capital importance. Whoever reads these lines and demonstrates acuity as sharp as mine can hope to gain access to the most precious possession it lies within my safe. Rem clues to come into an art to be found in three cylinders, each hidden where life and study combine a Greek world. Each cylinder is not as a number, even if as the celebrated author says, order is the pleasure of reason, but disorder is the delight of imagination. Indeed, despite my preferences for organized chaos, I must admit the reason usually prevails in the end. If by chance a person, or should I say a genius, was to match my intellect and find the combination of the safe, I would ask that they deliver it delivers its content into the safekeeping of my friend and colleague, Professor Armitage of Miskatonic University. I hate this the small font. The content of the safe is not only a vast digest of knowledge, but also a weapon that is far too dangerous for it to fall into the wrong hands. I thought you'd be able to approach the danger and... Okay. <laughs> Oh, dear lord. Arkham editions. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham editions. Arkham editions. Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham editions. Arkham editions. Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? A lot. Another volume by Arkham Editions. Arkham Editions. Never heard of them. That's supposed to help me. Cylinders that Drake tried to hide. I should perhaps listen to them. Okay, we, we listen to cylinders now. I'm assuming they mean like tape or something, but... Okie dokie. Kind of chalice. But just a kind of. And these red rocks, like precious stones, lie fixed, set in divine gold. To be the guardian of the grail does not protect me from its attractions, Henry. And I do confess it. I am willing to pay to know its secrets. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our white queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling, and my will strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. Dear friend, I thank you again for the anthology of the works of Arkham Editions that you sent me. Uh, volume 9, Azathoth and Other Horrors, seemed particularly relevant to my research. I never tire of browsing through them. The Queen has little protection. The Chalice of Knowledge. The Queen has little protection. This is probably going to elude me. What is not?
What did Drake say about this collection? Maybe how many red to be the guardian of the gems are on it? Not protect me from its attractions, Henry. The chalice of One, knowledge. Two, three, four, five. Okay, let's start here. One, two, three, four, five. And I do confess. So five. I am willing to pay to know its secrets. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our white queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling. Five, and my three, will nine. strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. What says Dr. Fuller? It's his patient, after all. He... he's busy with Captain Fitzroy. He specifically asked us not to bother him when that's the case. Oh, of course. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Blake, can you hear me? I'm Dr. Colden. We'll take care of you. There's nothing we can do. I tried talking to him. He's catatonic. Did you inject him with a tranquilizer? No, Doctor. Not me, not anyone. Our stock is empty, yet again. Again? But there was enough for the whole island. More and more people are suffering from insomnia. We can't refuse to help. Of course. Any idea what this man might be undergoing? Very well. I'll examine him. 30-year-old subject. Severe hypothermia. Erythematous papules around the eyes and eardrums. Necrosed palupral tissue. Lord, this smell. His skin shows abnormal loss of color and seems dried out. He's totally dehydrated. 
His fingertips and toes seem to feature a slight ring under the skin. Tender at the touch. Slightly sticky. Severe malnutrition. Swollen abdomen with traces of petechia. <sighs> Doesn't seem like an edema. Slight protuberances seem to indicate the presence of a foreign body. So, Doctor, an opinion? I'm not sure I have the necessary knowledge to treat this man. Don't say that. You're our most worthy doctor, after Dr. Fuller. Some of his symptoms are beyond my comprehension. What did you find? I see signs of hypodermoclysis, but he's still dehydrated. When was his last IV? He's constantly under perfusion. I've even gone beyond the recommended dose to no avail. And you won't believe me, but... When we bathed him earlier... He seemed to feel better? Yes. Like he needs an aquarium, not a perfusion. But that doesn't explain his condition. Did you examine his abdomen? It would seem there's something inside. He hasn't eaten in days. Are you certain it's not an edema? No. Can't you recognize an edema? Pushing with your finger won't leave a trace. And look at these bumps. <laughs> it's not like he could be pregnant. Whatever it is, this man has something inside him that shouldn't be there. We should operate on him at once. Dr. Fuller said not to worry, that the edema would go away by itself. You know, I'm not sure Dr. Fuller is telling the truth. In spite of the muscle contractions, his arms seem limp. Yes. They can't have decalcified, not at this rate. And yet, if there is a bone in this arm, it's softer than that of a newborn baby. What about his cranium? It's soft at the touch. It does seem like the skull of a baby. Look at these sticky rings growing at his fingertips. What can be happening? I'm sure you'll find an explanation. You have to. I almost don't believe it myself, but these symptoms are not those usually associated with the human species. What do you mean? Don't tell me you believe in extraterrestrials. No. This poor man is from our world, all right. But his body is undergoing unnatural mutations. And this transformation is killing him. His body simply can't cope. Where could he have gotten such an infection? I pray that it's not here. Dr. Cowden, may I know what you're doing to my patient? What I'm doing? How about what you've done to him? Let us calm down, my dear Marie. I don't appreciate your tone, nor your insinuations. I've done to him what I do to all my patients. Provide him with the best available care. Bullshit! Your imagination is without limit. It's your homemade drug again, is it not? Those people are not your guinea pigs. There, there. What have you seen to put you in such a state? His limbs, his body temperature. I don't know what experiments you've undertaken, but this is going too far. Oh, I sense some excitement beneath your indignation. Could it be you wish to join me in my scientific endeavors? You are a brilliant physician, Dr. Fuller, but this man... This man has the attributes of... some kind of animal. Fascinating. An animal, you say? Could you be more precise? Cephalopod, perhaps? <sighs> this amuses you. Your reaction does. I know your thirst for knowledge, Doctor. It's your innocent worries for this man that have you overreacting. For this man, and the others whose medical files you've been hiding. I have to protect my discovery. These people owe me their life, but the world isn't ready yet. It will be, in time. I will not let you do this. You disappoint me, Marie, but I still have hope you'll one day share my point of view. In the meantime, take care of your own patients and try not to forget who you're dealing with. Was that a threat? What did he mean? 
It was a warning. Dr. Fuller is this institution's founder and one of our profession's most influential voices. My word is of no weight against his. If I continue to protest, I will only ruin my reputation and career. It's scandalous. Can't we do anything? Is there no evidence of his crimes? Oh, that evidence exists. I'm sure of it. I need to find the missing medical files. And where would you find those? In his office? What if you get caught? I'd rather not think about that. I'm counting on your discretion. Of course, Doctor. You can count on me. I'll keep Mum. No, you're pulling my leg. I'm not joking. I saw the schedule. She's alone in the bathroom again. And she still says nothing to that old witch, Donovan. Oh, listen to the way you talk, you naughty girl. <laughs> and the answer is no. You can imagine that she doesn't dare say a thing. That silly goose lets herself be trodden. Oh, well, Watch out for the water, Doctor. We won't have to clean for a while. Patients and hospital personnel eat the same food. Dun, dun, dun. Gentlemen, may I help you? We're waiting on news regarding our mother, Maureen Harding. She came in with a kidney problem, but we haven't heard anything since. I'm sorry. Dr. Fuller is a very busy man. Well, is there anyone else who can tell us what's going on? She's our only family, you know. We can't even see her medical file. Don't worry. I'm aware our institution is not always welcoming. But your mother is in good hands. I'll tend to her myself. And keep you informed at once. Would that suit you? Well, that sure sounds great to us, Doctor. Thank you. But those are just words. So we're not budging. Very well. At least I'll know where to find you. Doctor, please. <sighs> My chest! Oh. His perfusion of a semi-physiological solution doesn't seem to work. He's undergoing a ventricular fibrillation. <laughs> Nurse? Deborah, Come and help me, please. His potassium level is too high. Replace it with 2% glucose solution with insulin, calcium, and sodium bicarbonate. I'll tend to it right away. Thank you. He's in your hands. Hay fever? What's he doing here? Dr. Colden? Ah, the whaling station. What's wrong with me? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, doctor, is that you? Yes, it's Dr. Colden. Tell me what happened. It's the old whaling station. See? What did you see there? Nothing. Nothing at all. The floor was all rotten and I fell straight through. And that's how you broke your back? Perhaps. No idea. Passed out. He broke his back in an accident down by the docks. I'll just sleep a bit more. Why did nobody tell me about her admission? Bob describes the state in which Irene Sanders entered the Riverside Institute as well as the treatment administered to her father, Fuller. Added a handwritten note he recommended to take her down to the psychiatric wing in order to provide her with the quiet and rest that she will need. Oh dear, that's not good. Mrs. Sanders? Ah, oh, so there's Harding. She's still sleeping. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney.
What is the boiler room key doing here? The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. Intoxication from breathing organic vapors. Another insomniac. I should find the cause for such a widespread trouble. Dr. Colden, here you are at last. This patient was again brought up to the psychiatric wing. We've been following the treatment you prescribed, but the dyskusia persists and he's lost a great deal of weight. We haven't been able to move him. The stress makes him hyperallergic. Sir, I am going to examine you. Do you understand? Inject him with a dose of pentobarbital, intramuscular, so that I can conduct the clinical examination. He bit his lips so much, they're still bleeding. White froth, evidently because of such drooling. His binds left bloody wounds. So, doctor, what should we do with this patient? You did good work. The tranquilizer has kicked in. Now you can disinfect and bandage his wounds. Thank you, doctor. And as to his weight loss? I'll prescribe an antifungal treatment for his dysgusia. In the meantime, feed him intravenously. It'll be done. So, Doctor, have you been able to examine our mother? I've tended to her, and I have good news. Her blood analysis is reassuring. Her kidneys are as new. Are you talking about the same person? This is miraculous. She's still recovering, but you may speak to her upon her awakening. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. We'll wait for her to wake up. We've been here since this morning, so it won't make a difference. It's a quiet little town. Days go by, steady as ever. I wanted more for myself, but... I don't get why they have us waiting so long. Almost no patience here. Ethan. Marie, I... What are you doing here? I'm... waiting for my medication, of course. Why? You're not here for treatment. Right? Am I so obvious? <laughs> Only to me. I know you worry about me. I trust you. I'm happy to see you. Me too, Ethan. Is that all? Well, there might be something else. I'm not sure. Tell me. I have nightmares. They keep me awake every night. It seems stupid, I know, but they're terrible. Actually, you're not the only one. No. No one has ever seen the things I see. It's like I'm turning mad. So many people have this affliction. It's like an epidemic. Do you think it might be related to Fuller's work? I don't know yet, but I will figure all this out. Everyone in Darkwater is suffering from nightmares. Really? We don't have any medication left. Oh. There's no excuse then. I should let you work. Take care, Ethan. You too, Marie. Oh, they like each other. Dr. Colden. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Thank you. I'll be going. This man, Edward Pierce, his file is incomplete. What did Fuller do to him? Dr. Colden. I'll be going. Dr. Fuller always keeps his key with him. In theory... This is where we hang the key to the boiler room. Dr. Colden. I'll be going.
Sorry, but nobody can take anything until I finish the inventory. The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. The operating room is never accessible after an operation. Let's hope I can go through the administration office. I don't have any business in the boiler room. Not yet. little time for you, Doctor. You'll find out that it's not only the doctors who have things to do. Bitch, shut up. No one likes you. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Dr. Colden. Mrs. Donovan. Nobody goes into Dr. Fuller's office. But rest assured, I'll tell him you came by. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I will tell him, nonetheless. Temperamental, if I understand correctly. It's so unfair. Elizabeth, you all right? Why is this room in such a state? Because, as always, I'm cleaning it by myself. And the water was once again shut off this morning. I had to bother Mrs. Donovan again, giving her a new excuse to belittle me. Do you really need Mrs. Donovan to open a valve? Why not ask the janitor? I can't make these decisions without her approval. Imagine if there were a leak. Anyhow, the boiler room is locked half the time. So every time the water gets shut off, I have to go and endure her reproach until she's settled the problem. I see. Courage, Elizabeth. Thank you, Doctor. The door to the boiler room is locked. Where did I see that key? Ah, oh, yes. The office in Block B. Amazingly won't be there, I bet. The key to the boiler room. All I have to do is shut off the water and hope Donovan takes the bait. <laughs> 